Welcome back to Dr. Sellers Educate. We're happy that you're back as you continue on your journey towards achieving success on the CNE exam, or perhaps you are here because you want to become a better nurse educator or to complete your recertification. Whatever your reason is, as you move forward on your journey, know that we are here to support you until you are successful on the CNE exam or to help you clarify perhaps a muddy point that you may be unclear about. Um, just remember that we want to make sure that you print out your study worksheet before every episode. That's going to allow you to be focused in your time and your priorities as you think about what your knowledge gaps are. That study worksheet you can find right here in the description, as well as the page numbers that are going to help you focus on content that is aligned with our review today, which will be focusing on clinical evaluation strategies. All right, so in Billings and Halstead, that's our primary text, sixth edition, chapter 18, pages 328 through 348. That's where you're going to find some additional content to expand your knowledge about our conversation and ultimately teaching strategies that will help you in the clinical setting. And then taking a look at box 18.2 on page 339, um, we'll also give you some additional content to help you better understand what our teaching strategies should be. All right, so as we look at our content, we're going to go ahead and jump in. We want to make sure that we are identifying what the evidence says we should focus on in order to help our students be um, the most successful in the clinical setting. This is aligned with Tanner's clinical judgment model. And if you're unclear about that model, there are some episodes, and we've listed those right here in our in the description for this episode, just to make sure that you are closing those knowledge gaps and have a clear understanding of concepts so that you can answer those questions correctly on the exam, okay, if that's part of your journey. So what are the three key tools that you want to use to help evaluate student effectiveness? We always like to start with our thought-provoking question, so let's take a look at our question for the week. Which of the following is a key element of the nursing faculty's role in promoting evidence-based practice among students? Every question that you see on the exam, I want you to think about what is the question asking me and what is it that I know for sure? Okay, so A, the option for A is relying solely on textbooks, B, disregarding dated research findings, C, incorporating research evidence into teaching and clinical practice, or D, focusing on secondary scholarly publications. Okay, so think about what is the question asking, number one, and number two, what is it that I know for sure? Okay, so based on the options that I'm given, you always want to think about what is the best answer. There may be two good answers, but there is always going to be one answer that is better than the other, okay? Okay. And remember that as you're thinking about these thought-provoking questions, we're excited when you do choose the correct answer, um, but we want to make sure that you understand why that answer is correct as well. So what are these clinical evaluation tools that we're talking about to better um, validate students' learning in the clinical setting? First is really a strategy. We want to make sure we're using clinical performance rubrics. These are going to help provide a very structured, um, objective tool to help students better understand how we're going to evaluate them and what points are associated with each level of performance. It's going to include typically domains such as clinical skills, communication, critical thinking, professionalism, and patient-centered care. But again, the most important area that you want to focus on is being clear about the points associated with, with each level of the rubric, as well as the description of what that performance looks like when students earn those specified points. The second tool we want to take a look at is the uh, Objective Structured Clinical Examination Checklist, also called OSCE. It is a simulation-based assessment tool that is commonly used in clinical and nursing education when we think about our ability to evaluate that students have achieved a level of competency that is required for that specific skill. So there's often tasks where there could be scenarios, um, unfolding case studies where students are actually expected to demonstrate a skill, okay? And it is a controlled environment, so we're clear. Um, the student and the faculty are able to, first of all, communicate what the expectations are about their ability to perform that skill and what is required to achieve a level of competency so they 
indeed pass that specific skill on the checklist. The third evaluation tool that we want to talk about in this snapshot are the clinical reflective journals. Although it's not an, a, a traditional evaluation tool in the context that we normally think about how we evaluate, it is an important instrument that will allow students to think about the care that they have provided. It's going to trigger students to really think through processes that um, they walk through whenever they were providing the care. They are able to really engage in a self-assessment. What worked well based on the decisions that I made as we think about Tanner's clinical judgment, judgment model and the four phases associated with clinical care that the students are providing, how we expect students to be able to advance their clinical knowledge and skills to a higher level of critical thinking where they're taking a proactive approach in a way that's going to result in a very positive patient outcome. And then those learning experiences during the clinical rotations. Um, you know, clinical reflective journals, not only do they provide students with insight about perhaps what worked well, what didn't work well, and what they want to do differently next time, but it also gives us a small glimpse as faculty into what the, how the student process the learning, the clinical learning experiences, and perhaps it also gives us some insight about gaps that they may have in their knowledge processes. So we want to engage in regular entries. So seeing progression throughout that clinical experience is also a benefit that we have in our clinical faculty role. Um, students often can also discover challenges perhaps that uh, maybe they did not perform from a clinical standpoint in alignment with what the evidence says. So then being able to think about, okay, so what was the missing piece? What didn't I understand? And students have an opportunity to, to really take that look at themselves and how they wanna improve their clinical practice the next time. All right, so when we look at the practice question, the thought provoking question, if you chose C, incorporating research evidence into teaching and clinical practice, you are correct. And I know that for some of you, you're thinking, okay, well, there may have been a, a second good choice. Um, we don't want to use secondary sources. We want to use primary sources. If you were thinking that that was a good option, um, this is going to allow students and faculty to share information that is evidence-based from the actual researcher. Oftentimes when we talk about secondary, it is written based on someone else's interpretation of the research findings. Okay, so we always want to have that primary resource as our um, foundation for developing policies and procedures for the clinical setting. And so I would say if you have any questions about um, that thought-provoking question, just reach out to us. We're always happy to collaborate and work with you to better help you understand concepts that may be a little muddy for you. So in conclusion, there are many tools that are going to help us better evaluate our students' performance. You know, that's what it's all about. We want to be able to objectively evaluate and validate students' clinical skills. And we want to work collaboratively with our didactic faculty to make sure that there is content integrated into the curriculum that will help students be successful in the clinical practice decisions that they are making by providing structured rubrics. And we wanna share those rubrics in advance with our students so they are aware of exactly how we're gonna be evaluating them, how they can earn points, and what specific behaviors we are looking for as we evaluate student performance. We wanna use checklists. We wanna have those qualitative insights and giving that feedback to students in a timely manner also helps them revise their clinical decisions, perhaps even look at some of the content in their textbooks as they think about what their practice is gonna be the next time. This allows us our, to support our students on their learning journey in an effort to help them make the best um, effective clinical decisions in um, as they practice not only with us as their clinical faculty, but even throughout their nursing career. Until next time, we always enjoy spending time with you all. Reach out to us if you have questions, info at Dr. Sellers Educate, and we will see you next time. Have a great one, everybody. Bye-bye.